I'm a huge fan of Visual Studio Team Systems and of the Team Foundation server. My developers save an hour or two a day using the integrated check-in, source control, work item management, project document repository, and so on, compared to the way that we used to manage all of these things before in a variety of different ways, uh, handwritten tools, spreadsheets, email, so forth and so on. But using Visual Studio to interact with your repository is not always incredibly pleasant. It's a geeky interface written for geeks and by geeks. What I'd like to show you is an add-in called the TFS Power Tools that just beef up the capabilities of what you can do inside Visual Studio a little bit to make it a little more pleasant to work with Team Foundation Server. For example, I've got some projects here um, that are open and if I right click and I say Project Alerts, you can see that uh, in this particular project uh, I don't have alerts set up. Whereas on this one, I do. I want alerts when anyone changes my work items and because I'm the manager on this other project I actually get an email whenever anybody checks anything in. Now, these two alerts are very useful. As a developer, if the tester goes back into an existing bug and adds a little more detail because maybe they have another repro case, having an alert on it lets you know that you need to go and open it up and take a look. There's more information in it now. If the manager changes the priority of something that's assigned to you, whether they make it more, pro more urgent or less, certainly you would want to know about that so that you can plan your work accordingly. And for myself as a manager, the steady stream of emails showing me what's being checked in lets me know what everyone is doing or not doing without going and asking them what they're doing. It's a very non-intrusive way of getting progress reports without interrupting their progress. So I love alerts, but this is a kind of an awkward way to manage them. Certainly if I wanted to say, hey, that other project doesn't have any alerts, let's go in and check these boxes. It's difficult to know where you kind of stand in alerts. This node here, alerts, is not in a default install. It was added by the power tool. So if I double click it, you can see that it actually shows me uh, my alerts across projects. I have uh, three alerts on work items for three projects that I'm working on and one alert set up for check-ins and you can look down in here and see the specific projects uh, and the, the details of this alert. One of the things that I could very easily do here is take away this line um, restricting that I only should get it on this particular project and this would have the consequence of sending me emails across all of my projects without having to set up individual alerts for them all. Just makes it easier to manage and to understand what's going on with the different alerts that you should have set up and to fix inconsistencies if there are any. Let's close this and I'm going to actually run a separate utility. When you install the power tools you get in here this server manager. I'm just going to run this and then I'm going to connect to my server and drill into what this product knows about my Team Foundation server. Most useful to me is this statistics page. So you can see um, who, how many users have work items assigned, how many people have checked things into this server, how many work items there are on it total in various different areas and iterations and attachments, queries that people have set up. Um, huge number of files, over 5,000 files in over 400 folders, and how many check-ins there have been, how much shelving's been going on, even the number of pending changes, things that are, that are checked out that people have yet to put in. And you can really learn an awful lot about your system by flipping through uh, these statistics, uh, probably not you know, every week, but from time to time. The other thing you can find in here in the uh, maintenance tab 
is shelf sets and workspaces. So the, here we have the various things people are working on. Let's just lengthen up this dialog a little. But down here, we have things that have been shelved. And we specifically have things that have been shelved in 2007. And this is probably a case where a developer could do with coming in and cleaning them out. You also have labels. Um, in our projects, we use labels for example, to indicate that something's officially a release that went to the client. They don't need to be cleaned up, but it's certainly an interesting way to review them. So this little uh, server manager really gives you a good window into what's going on on your TFS instances. Let's go back into Visual Studio, and I'm going to add a bug under one of my projects. Now, we have a number of fields to fill out, such as the, the area, what's it a bug in, let's say that something doesn't look right, I might fill that out as being a user experience, and the iteration, and in this particular project we have sort of nested iterations, I'm going to put something in phase 19 of version 2, and I generally don't create bugs to assign to myself, I might want to assign them to one of the developers, um, and I generally don't assign things as being uh, defaulting to priority 2. Uh, but I suppose I could and we have a rank as well. We've modified our template a little bit and I might like a default value uh, in here also. So you can see that even before I start typing out whatever the problem is, whatever the bug I found, um, I have to fill in an awful lot of things and one of the things that happens in many circumstances is people forget to adjust these fields. So you have things that are in the iteration that's just the name of the whole project or you have things that don't have uh, a rank assigned because it's just um, a bit annoying to have to fill in all these fields before you can start. So in the power tools we have the capability to take a bug that um, is current, has this iteration on, is assigned to the person bugs usually get assigned to, is in the state we usually like to assign bugs into and so on. And I'm going to find a bug like that. This one looks good. This is the way I'd like my bugs to be assigned. So I can come in here and right click and we now have a new um, option available from the Power Tools Capture Template. This pops up a template I could call this to be the template for phase 19 bugs. Let's say uh, this is a bug with pry1 assigned to Brian in phase 19. Now obviously I don't want all the bugs I add to have the same title, and I don't want all the bugs I add to have the same description or remaining work. But I can leave all the rest of these and say that's how I'd like them to be assigned from now on and I can save this template. Now you see there's a template here under work item templates and when I double click it, this is just telling me about the template. This isn't the description for the bug. I still have to fill the bug in in the usual way, but all these other things are filled in the way I like them. So it's just a lot quicker if I'm a tester or a manager and I'm running uh, through assigning a whole pile of work items at once. I don't have to be clicking in drop downs over and over again. I can say, look, everything I'm adding right now is going to be in phase 19. Everything I'm adding right now is going to be assigned to Brian. And then I can go in, maybe assigning uh, another batch to another bunch of people or, or for another phase. It's a very small um, change in the way that you think, but it removes some of your frustrations and lets you simply focus on typing what you want to type. Of course, there's so much more in these power tools. It's impossible to show you all of them. Um, really, if you're a TFS user, you want the power tools so that you can easily edit your process templates instead of hand editing XML. If you want to go through users and change their names for whatever reasons, even writing your own custom check-in policies. There's so much available to you. I strongly encourage you, if you're a TFS user, start using the power tools.